there have been a number of recent uh, advances in sickle cell disease that I think are incredibly exciting and are likely to be practice changing. One of them is the completion and now publication of the TWITCH trial, which is transfusion switching to hydroxyurea in children with abnormal transcranial Dopplers. This is an, an NIH or NHLBI funded multi-center trial um, that was not only U.S. but also Canada that randomized children to continue standard care, which is transfusions after an abnormal TCD, or being randomized to hydroxyurea. Um, I should go back and certainly remind the audience, many of whom are hematologists who are well aware, that TCDs or transcranial Dopplers are recommended annually for children with sickle cell disease as a means um, to identify those children at highest risk for uh, strokes and to initiate primary stroke prevention with transfusions. And that previously we determined that, um, that transfusions would be effective in preventing strokes but that they, they could not be discontinued and that our attempt in the past to discontinue those were associated with new neurologic events and new strokes. The TWITCH trial for the first time gives us a viable alternative to indefinite transfusions. These children were, after at least a minimum of 12 months of transfusions, were randomized with half of them receiving hydroxyurea. It, this was a non-inferiority study that at its very first interim analysis demonstrated that it reached primary endpoint. And so at this point in time, when we talk to families who, who's, who have children who have abnormal TCDs, yes, we begin therapy with chronic transfusions, but they will be given a choice if they choose to actually consider hydroxyurea as a viable alternative. A few other uh, uh, really key events are continuing to underscore the benefits of stem cell transplants as a curative option. Um, the best work we're seeing are still in HLA matched sibling donors, but certainly worldwide we continue to see that this is a viable option and reasonably can be considered standard care for, for patients in need of a curative option. I think another area that's particularly exciting is the advancement in terms of new drug discovery. At the current time, there is only a single FDA-approved drug for sickle cell disease, and a disease that affects 100,000 Americans and millions worldwide. We clearly need more options. Um, the work in the development of GBT-440 um, may be um, one, uh, hopefully, of more to come of rationally designed drugs that are specifically targeted to impact the underlying mechanism of this disease. Clearly, when we talk about sickle cell disease in the United States, it affects 100,000, and many of us find that number to be uh, quite substantial and quite a challenge. But it's important to recognize that the real burden of sickle cell disease is worldwide, largely in Sub-Saharan Africa, but also in India. There are tremendous challenges, but also tremendous opportunities. There are research opportunities in that the, um, the large numbers of individuals elsewhere um, really can help us to understand more about the genetics and the genomics of, of sickle cell disease, as well as likely responsive to treatment. I think it is also important that the American Society of Hematology is also devoted to improving care of those individuals where they live. And, and it needs to first begin with diagnosis. There are a number of interventions for sickle cell that we think are feasible uh, in the developing world, and I think that ASH is looking forward to being partners as part of its sickle cell disease call to action to look at where our global opportunities are fundamentally to improve the lifespan, to improve the quality of life for people worldwide with sickle cell disease. I think the primary challenge is awareness that the guidelines exist. Um, the guidelines certainly were anticipated by the sickle cell community in the academic world, but a large number of sickle cell patients are cared for in community practices and in smaller uh, non-urban centers. So I think that what we want to be able to do is to really find effective ways to communicate primarily with the people who are actually boots on the ground, the providers of care for individuals with sickle cell disease. 
Sometimes those are hematologists, other times they're primary care providers, but they're also emergency medicine physicians, um, mid-level providers like advanced practice nurses and physician's assistants. Wherever the patients are, we want to make sure that, that the individuals providing care have what we believe is the best information on how to care for them. Another challenge with any clinical practice guideline is almost as soon as you create the guidelines, or they're, they're, they're rapidly becoming obsolete, largely because of advances in the field. Um, ASH is continuing discussions with NHLBI on how to ensure the legacy of the guidelines by examining what the opportunities are to maintain them in an updated state. I think one that it would seem has been very successful based on the number of them are the, 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 um, the trifold uh, um, um, uh, brochures um, that are the, what we call the pocket guides. Um, we can't print them fast enough. Um, the, these are actually taking the four principal components of the guidelines and then put them into a format that you truly can put in your pocket. Of course, we recognize that most people in their pocket is a smartphone. Um, and so one of the, one of the, the efforts will be to, to put these into as many forms as necessary to make them access, as accessible to more people. Um, many of the pocket guides are, are widely disseminated to people in training and to the ASH members, but we, again, we recognize that many patients are cared for in other settings, and so one thing that we want to do is to address how do we get the guidelines out to people. There's also been discussions about having the guidelines at some point converted into patient-friendly materials. Um, that it should not be an assumption that, a gu that this guideline, at least in its current format, is accessible to most patients. Um, but certainly to the extent that a patient can be their own advocate, to walk into an emergency room and, and to be able to say quite knowledgeably, this is my understanding of what the standard of care is for sickle cell disease, is powerful, it's empowering, and I think may lead to more effective treatment.